A Kharaji is observing the alleyways of Basra, awaiting to have a glimpse of Mu'min al-Taq to ambush him at any time, with the intention to assassinate him, to kill him. There he is, Shaytan al-Taq. And in the Kharaji's grips he falls. The Kharaji took his knife out and placed it on the collar of Mu'min al-Taq and said, by Allah, if you declare your disassociations from Ali and Uthman, I will let you go. Otherwise, I will kill you right here. Mu'min al-Taq immediately says, I am of Ali and of Uthman, I declare disassociation. And out of the Kharaji's custody, he was released. The Kharaji thought or he was thinking that he had declared disassociation from both Ali and Uthman because as you should know the Kharijis they have declared disassociation from Uthman and Imam Ali the Kharaji then reported what has happened to a man one of his companions and upon hearing Mu'min al-Taq's reply, the man said, Woe to you, Wayhak. He had tricked you. He said to you, I am of Ali. Just how Ibrahim, peace be upon him, the Prophet, says, But whoso follows me is verily of me. Man tabi'ani fa'innahu minni. The man said, Woe to you, Wayhak. He had tricked you. He said, I am of Ali. Just how Ibrahim, Salamullahi alayhi, said, But whoso follows me is verily of me. And then he said, And of Uthman, I declare this association. So he said, I am of Ali, and of Uthman, I declare this association. So he rather associated himself with Ali عليه, and disassociated himself from Uthman. But the Kharaji, he was too thick to understand. He, Mu'min al-Taq, was under threats because he was someone who would boldly and confidently attack what was thought to be virtues of the Sahaba he would turn these virtues into vices. We have mentioned that the first who called Mu'min al-Taq, Shaytan al-Taq, was Abu Hanifa, one of four Imams of Ahlul Khilaf. So we have bought a series of debates that Mu'min al-Taq had with Abu Hanifa. And I want the their viewers, especially from the self-proclaimed Sunni sect to just look at the difference between Mu'min al-Taq and Abu Hanifa. Look at the, the, the knowledge and the skill that Mu'min al-Taq had with the Imams of Ahlul Khilaf. And Mu'min al-Taq is just a companion of Imam al-Sadiq This is one debate. Short debate that's ha that's what Minu Taq had with Abu Hanifa. It said Abu Hanifa met Mu'min al Taq and he asked him, O oh Abu Jafar, do you believe in the return? Mu'min al Taq replies, Yes. Abu Hanifa sneakeringly asked him and said to him, Okay, give me 500 dinars. And when I return, I will give it back to you. Look at the intelligence of Mu'min al-Taq. Of course, uh, by Abu Hanifa saying this, he's trying to mock the Shia's belief of the return. Look at what Mu'min al-Taq said to him. He said, okay, no problem. I am ready to give you 500 uh, dinars. But I want some guarantee that you will come to me as you are. You will not return to me as a monkey or another animal. 
that I will be able to take back what you borrowed from me. Abu Hanifa was unable to answer him and he left the way deserted. Abu Hanifa met with, with Mu'min al-Taq another time and asked him, Oh Abu Ja'far, what is your opinion of, te of temporary marriage? Do you think it is Islamically lawful? Mu'min al-Taq replies, yes. Abu Hanifa says, then what prevents you from ordering your wives to marry temporarily and earn you some money? Look at the, the uh, dana'a and khissa of Abu Hanifa. Look at the way he speaks. <clears throat> Look at the low level of, of Abu Hanifa. Look at what Mu'min al-Taq replies to him. He says, not all jobs are desirable, even if they are lawful. People have ranks. Though, which they are importance is high. However, uh, however, Abu Hanifa, what is your opinion of Nabid wine? Do you think it is lawful? Abu Hanifa says yes. Mu'min al then says, then what prevents you from letting your wives sit in wine shops and earn you some money? Abu Hanifa says, one for one. He's trying to level it out. So he says, one for one. But your arrow is more penetrative. Another time, Abu Hanifa meets with Mu'min al-Taq. And this was when Imam, when Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, was martyred. He goes to Mu'min al-Taq, gloating of the Imam's death. He says to Mu'min al-Taq, O oh Abu Ja'far, your Imam has died. Mu'min al-Taq replies to him, But your Imam is amongst those who have been granted a respite until the Day of Judgment. And by that he meant Satan. Satan is your Imam, O oh, oh Abu Hanifa. Mu'min al-Taq has several other debates with Abu Hanifa, indicating his excellence and intelligence over him. At the site of a congregation in Kufa, where Shi'as and non-Shi'a individuals were gathered. A man by the name of Ibn Abi Hadra or Ibn Abi Khadra stood up and, state, and stated with confidence. He stood up uh, from the gathering and he stated. He said, I can affirm before you all Shia that Abu Bakr is better than Ali and better than the rest of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, by four main virtues that no one can deny, according to him. He is the second to have been buried next to the Prophet in his house. He was one of two with him in the cave. He was one of two who led the Prophets, who led the prayer. He was one of two who led the prayer after the Prophet was taken to his Lord and he was the most truthful of this nation, Siddiq al-Ummah. O oh, Ibn Abi Hadra, voiced out Mu'min al-Taq from amongst the crowd. And I can affirm that Ali ibn Abi Talib is better than Abu Bakr and better than the rest of the companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, by the same four virtues you have mentioned. And what you thought to be virtues of Abu Bakr are actually vices of him. Tell me, O oh, Ibn Abi Hadra, Mu'min al-Taq continues. Tell me, O oh, Ibn Abi Hadra, how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, leave his houses, his houses and possessions, the access of which has been forbidden by Allah without the Prophet's permission? Were they left to be inherited by his family and offspring? Or were they left to be, or, or were they left as sadaqah, charity, arms for the Muslims? Silence. No answer was given by Ibn Abi Hadra. Mu'min al-Taq continues refuting point by point, claim by claim, that's, uh, that's Ibn Abi Hadra, one of the scholars of, of the opponents. Uh, what, uh, he, he refuted point by point, claim by claim, from the first to the last. Mu'min al-Taq refuted all of his points in this debate. This debate is a very long debate. Unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I cannot read it all uh, to you. It is almost 12 pages long. I will tell the brothers, inshallah, to put this debate in, in the description box. 
I urge all the viewers, Shias and so-called Sunnis, to read this debate. Read and see how Mu'min al-Taq refutes this, one of the scholars of the opponents from the beginning of his, of his points, which was, which was that he was buried uh, in the Prophet's house, to the last one, that he was the, the Siddiq of this nation. He refutes all of them. And he proves that Abu Bakr is a hypocrite. He's a munafiq. Aslan. I urge all the viewers to read this debate and inshallah take from it. We have reached the end of uh, our series, The Pioneers of Rejection, by this last episode of Mu'min al-Taq. We have learned inshallah from this series that we have learned from this series the history of the Rafida. The history of the companions of the Imams, peace be upon them. How they were. What were their actions? What were their actions? How did they refute opponents? How did they, how did they debate with individuals and, and, and individuals such as Abu Hanifa, one of the Imams of Ahlul Khilaf? And we learn from this. And we learn from their rank that they achieved in order for us to reach the rank that they achieved is by sharing the message of Al-Muhammad, reviving the matters of Al-Muhammad, speaking the truth about the enemies of Al-Muhammad, speaking about Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa, the first tyrant of Islam. You want to know where terrorism started? It started from the moment Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa took leadership of this ummah. We, le we learned from Mu'min al-Taq how he destroys all of the claims made by the self-proclaimed Sunni sect. And what do we take from this? Insha'Allah we have learned from the series that in order for us to reach the ranks that Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, Muhammad ibn Abi Umayr, Mu'min al-Taq achieved, the ranks that they have achieved is for us to revive the matters of Al-Muhammad. To expose the enemies of Al-Muhammad. To speak openly and declaring bara'a from the enemies of Al-Muhammad and the enemies of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hada walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nasar Allah man nasar Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahiri. Minhajunah.